going on guys it's Frito here for your overwatch today we're going to be doing a tier list video for beta phase two now, i'm going to be going through the heroes in order of appearance in the patch making comments on my evaluation on the changes overall and we'll slowly build what i think is going to be the main meta of beta phase two on this patch the internet is a very dangerous place and if you're not using a vpn you're opening yourself up to all manner of malware web trackers and other malicious threats that's why you should start protecting yourself with today's video sponsor nordvpn i love to use nord for the peace of mind when i'm surfing the internet but especially to encrypt my data when i'm on public wi-fi if you're internet savvy you probably don't need me to explain this to you but cyber criminals are everywhere and if you don't encrypt your web traffic you can be subject for lots of abuse but there's fun reasons too streaming platforms like to lock content behind specific regions and when a show isn't in your region anymore you can't have access to it but if you use a vpn you can bypass regional content gates i use this all the time to access content that netflix tries to block from me the netflix in usa doesn't have the demon slayer movie but with just a few clicks with nord vpn i I'm in a different country new region then all of a sudden voila i have access to the content i'm paying for and for our fans nord is now offering a free month to celebrate their new bundles nord can hook you up with all your internet security needs you also can get a password protector and encrypted cloud storage and they got a 30-day money back guarantee so there's no risk whatsoever don't delay take our link in the description to nordvpn.com forward slash your overwatch and take advantage of the free month they're given our fans as well as check out their bundles because everything nord does is quality importantly the role passives for support and dps got changed significantly it might look like there's a support nerf on this patch now that the self-heal kicks in in 1.5 seconds as opposed to just one but the dps nerf is way more significant where you no longer gain the 10 percent move speed which applies in game all the time on all interactions on where you position outplaying enemy abilities helping you get in position to secure kills it was an amazing passive that now is just a cute useful passive to get 30 percent up to 30 percent ultimate charge when you swap heroes so you're incentivized a little bit to swap but remember you're still losing 70 percent of your ult and in order to swap you're probably dead so it's more of a stop from losing mechanic rather than help you win mechanic and in overwatch 2 for the most part the mid fight is really important the ult fight still matters as well but it's not the be all end all first up in the past shows is reinhardt who's going to be losing some tankiness he's going to drop in armor but gain a little bit of normal health to compensate it's funny he gets nerfed because so many people thought he was a terrible pick in the other beta but really like if you play him right he was really good with the supporting cast around him i still think he can be quite good but he is team comp dependent he's aimed and almost designed to have a bad matchup against junker queen with her melee abilities getting wounds throughout the death ball formation so reinhardt will be weak to that but reinhardt defending let's say an anna who can disable the junker queen that might still work so you're gonna have to decide whether you have the team comp and personnel on your team to counter the things that are supposed to counter you so you can get your value that's where reinhardt's gonna land so right out the gate i'm gonna put reinhardt in the team comp dependent b tier he'll rise with the better teamwork you have if you have characters like lucio batiste may and especially the new symmetra he'll go way up with her but if you feel like your teammates are letting you down with the teamwork, then you might want to swap to other heroes, especially Orisa is kind of built to counter Junker Queen, for example. That's an easy one for you early in the video. Next up is going to be Winston, who loses 100 health off his bubble shield, as well as his ultimate now takes 10% longer to charge. This is really important because I feel like the devs balanced Winston based on where he was resting from the first perception of the beta patch last time. But then Zenyatta got mega buffed and that ultimately was going to counter Winston anyway. Like the pros on the Overwatch League right now are playing on that Giga Zen buff. And as long as you can keep that Zen alive, these face tank characters that can get discorded and Winston's playstyle, he just sort of gets bursted because there isn't the utility in the game to put into him to sort of make him work. And he's kind of a 
do nothing character against Zen. Now, when other matchups, like especially if you're against an Orisa and if the enemy doesn't counter you, Winston's amazing in the game. So it's a little boomer bust. Like he's a very reliable, stable pick, but the peaks of his output aren't so exciting, especially as they've reworked a lot of the other tanks in the role. So unfortunately for my friend Winston, I'm going to put him in the C tier as easily countered. We'll talk about this more throughout the tier list, but I think we're heading more towards a poke meta as opposed to the previous beta when the flanker DPS had extra move speed to go in with Winston and in and out, especially he was a lot stronger and flexible and really added a stable core to stage around the map. So you either have to do more when you go in or stay at range more. And Winston kind of goes in between and is flexible, which I don't think is great on this patch. For D.Va, they exchanged a hundred of her regular health for armor health. And armor in Overwatch 2 is super powerful because in Overwatch 1, it was mostly good against spread type damage, but Overwatch 2, it blocks 30% of damage overall, which makes it a lot better against burst damage. And since I think we're largely in a more poke dominant meta, that makes D.Va a lot better because she can scout around and poke her head out. And even taking a full Widow headshot to her face is going to be less potent than before because there's more armor for the enemy to chew through. I think it's going to be common for her and Winston to kind of oscillate between which one is the preferred one on a given patch because there are dive maps in the game. But D.Va has a bit more of a defensive playstyle as opposed to Winston who can like stage on different parts of the map and snipe from different locations. D.Va is better a bit playing with her team, masking them with defense matrix when they want to go in, but mostly peeling and kind of safeguarding the formation. So either way, they both have a playstyle to kind of help the team on high ground maps, especially like Dorado. I'm a huge fan of D.Va on Watchpoint Gibraltar as well. These maps, it's going to be tough for these low ground tanks to do anything when you can go up and down. Now, I was considering putting D.Va into the B tier for map dependent picks, but I think there's enough maps that she'll be very strong on and has some of the most durability against poke. Keep in mind as well, you're going to be seeing a lot of Junker Queen in beta phase two. And although D.Va might not necessarily have a great fight interaction with her, she has the mobility to dodge those engages. And that's going to be half of countering Junker Queen really well, just not getting hit by what she does. But she doesn't save your team from her. So keep that in mind. We'll get to tanks that are good at that later. Consider her more to facilitate the flanks and sniper angles. Doomfist is up next. And it, most importantly, they removed the slow from Seismic Slam, which they said, I believe in an interview, that it was just annoying to play against. So they don't like the mechanic. This looks to me like the devs just saying, eh, he'll just be kind of bad this patch. Oh, well, we'll get to him later because it seemed like they might want to see where he's at and then buff him more later if necessary. And I'm almost positive the slow was entirely required for his power. I think you're going to find Junker Queen better at his old playstyle of like going in, getting extra health, kind of blocking a lot, being tanky and easily picking off squishies. Well, Junker Queen, I think, is a better version of that now that... Doomfist is nerfed in two different ways. He also got his power block reduced by 10%. It only blocks 80% now. But the game is just less divey overall because your DPS moves slower. And without that stun, your Genji and Echo player will struggle to mop up the kills you're setting up with the slam. So if you can get your power block charged up and punch to Oblivion, your opponents, then Doom will still get kills. But I think as the player base begins to learn that don't charge the gauntlet and be sure to sleep him when he's actually trying to block in order to charge it up. Then he just looks like kind of a joke of a character in some ways. So his power is almost entirely determined on the enemy's Ana. And maybe better if you have newer players. So if you're on console, maybe you can expect Doomfist to do better because your opponents aren't used to playing up against the Doomfist yet. So early on, put him up a tier or two. But as this beta goes on, I think people will realize that he's not that hard to counter. And there's other easier options to just run out the enemy and kill them with a tank without a shield. Orisa got a ton of changes and I'm not going to explain them all because there's way too many points. My conclusion on where her changes land is that I think she'll be even worse at higher tiers, surprisingly, but a lot better at medium tiers. And the reason for that is a few key takeaways. She'll be doing more damage and more headshot damage, perhaps even worse damage at longer range. It's a little bit hard to decipher because they change the damage fall offs, but they also increase the core damage. So that means, yes, it begins falling off earlier, but you're starting with more damage overall. So I think you're going to feel at medium range and close range. You're just doing more, especially if you hit headshots 
with the albeit it is a smaller projectile now it isn't the big fat projectiles that shrink over time it's just the small ones but for me anyway as a overwatch one orisa player i'm excited to jump into this because i think you're going to feel like you're a lot more lethal against the things that you're good at fighting namely junker queen you're going to see a lot of her in the beta just because people want to try her out well you can ruin their fun by picking orisa who holds her ground and knocks back junker queen stunning her so you can easily disable her while she gets higher headshot damage from her weapon she can get headshot herself when fortified now which means against the poke heavy meta and higher tier players that can headshot you and even characters like zenyatta who's really strong putting a discord on you you will melt to that but the matchups you will be good at, you'll be really good at. And also keep in mind that your fortify effect applies when you ult. So that means it'll be easier for you to die when you're ulting, but they also buffed the ult's damage so it can do way more total damage and begins ramping up faster at 200. It sort of feels like when they buffed McCree's Deadeye over and over again, right? To sort of ramp it up quickly and have a higher peak of damage. So good uses of the ults will decimate the enemy, but you won't be as tanky as you were before. At a skill tier where players don't hit headshots every single time on a tank like they do at the higher tiers, you think you're going to find Orisa really good. And good against Junker Queen, I'm going to put her in A tier, but she can't go up and down, so high ground maps are a little tricky. And remember, of course, a lot of the rules that we made from the first beta when I didn't think Orisa was very good still apply, but I think for the average tier of play, you'll have fun farming the players that are trying to have fun with Junker Queen. Other key takeaways, her Javelin Spin does more knockback. On a shorter cooldown, but you have less speed, you'll have more speed when fortified, and the Spear Damage Impact was nerfed from 80 damage to 60, and there is a longer cooldown on it at 8 seconds, but remember her gun, I think, is majorly improved. So you're going to be doing more damage overall. Although they did nerf a few things with Orisa, overall, I think it's quite a big buff for the pub stomper tier of play. Now that's it for the patch changes. We'll go to the other tanks now, which are a little bit easier to sort when you remember what I think the meta is going to be, more poke dominant. So Sigma then goes into A tier for me because he has a shield, he has medium range damage and a stun, good for fighting Junker Queen, and also good for giving you an option in a very cagey meta that you're trying to get angles on. He can push in, get space, kind of hold his ground and get value while waiting in a way that a lot of other tanks can't and his ultimate is very good any of these tanks it is aim and skill dependent like if you can't hit any ability with sigma he doesn't play the game for you you're gonna have to play a bit of an easier tank and maybe you'll do better with them we're gonna alter the b tier now to be about map matchup and team comp dependent because that's where i'm gonna put the rest of the tanks which might seem surprising because a few of these were really bad in beta one but first up zarya who was really good beta one and will be good against junker queen because something that wants to dive your team full in with cooldowns kind of similar to orisa and a lot of other rush playstyles. you've got two bubbles to save teammates charge yourself up with damage crossfire with them zarya is going to be great for countering those rush styles that don't have a shield while zarya is weak to a rhine shield these other rush characters that need to go in on your team zarya is perfect but she has a weaker matchup i'd say up against the sniper characters and now orisa with her better medium range damage is higher in the list for that so while zarya likes a really brawly playstyle, when it's a little bit farther range she's gonna suffer now surprisingly we've got roadhog and wrecking ball in b tier as well i feel like nobody's talked about this but hog is gonna have a good matchup against junker queen i don't remember reading anything that said her abilities stop her from getting stunned and although sigma might have more flexibility against more of the rest of the meta hog is like a budget sigma in a way if they want to run at you with no defense for your hook well you're gonna get value from it there's a chance i'm even underrating roadhog i'm just a little skeptical because he's done so poor in the past Obviously, he's weak himself to Ana, but I don't think the average level of play has the elite tier Ana play that sleeps the tank perfectly every time. A lot of times the sleep is mistimed or launched across the map and it's not followed up on. Another funny thing that I think helps Roadhog is when DPS have lower move speed, Roadhog can kind of press in a little bit and get those angles. He'll be able to farm DPS a little bit easier than Beta 1. And I think his matchups against Rhine, Diva, and Zarya are pretty bad. He has a chance to hook Sigma. And against Orisa, remember, it's not Beta 1 Orisa. It's a very different Orisa. Orisa can get headshot in fortify now so roadhog in close range against her 
can actually deal some meaningful damage. She does have a lot of tools to stun him out of breather and interact with him, but I don't know if he loses the matchup as easily as he did in beta one. When Orisa is casting and channeling Terra Surge, she can get headshot by whole hog now. Wrecking Ball's a little tricky because I think he takes some finesse to play. So if you feel like the map is right, you're up against sniper characters, they don't have the right disables for you. I think Ball's gonna be good, but I actually think Junker Queen will be better at a lot of the same things Ball wants to do. Even though he got the better knockback and everything, I think he's a bit more of a higher tier teamwork based hero. And he doesn't go in alone and be as lethal as some other picks that you're gonna find easier. Which is why I'm going to put Junker Queen at the top of B tier. Higher tiers, super easy to counter, but for average players, very doable. You're gonna feel like Junker Queen is the best duelist you've ever picked up because if she has her cooldowns and there is something you can run at, she will just kill it easily every time. And up against her, until you learn how to counter her, I think she's gonna run you over and you'll feel terrified. But with a bit of pre-fight planning, a bit of better positioning, she drops in value, I think, below some of these other picks. So for me, not a top meta contender, but certainly in the right circumstances, if the enemy hasn't learned how to deal with her yet, she's gonna rampage. I honestly think this is the biggest pub stomper character. If the enemy don't pick counters, I legitimately think she's like S. I think we're gonna see highlight reels of this character like uh, no character we've ever seen. You've seen it a bit with some of the top doom fists farming in the first beta, but Junker Queen will have that level of lethality, but just easier because her cooldowns kind of do it for her. Her passive self heals for her. We saw how Reaper was so successful, like getting in with his ultimate life stealing on multiple targets. Junker Queen does that off cooldown. So you must stun her. You must disable her. You must not let her get big cleaves on your whole team, giving her extra life steal. But I think once you do that, then you'll kind of crossfire on her and she only has one play to make, which is run at you. So if you have map control and can see her coming, then she won't be too much of a threat. So it's a skill matchup for sure. Onto the damage picks, back to the patch notes. Bastion's tactical grenades cooldown has been reduced from 10 to eight seconds. Meh, kind of nice, but the best part about Bastion to me is that he is a pub stomper demon. Um, answer me a question. Does Junker Queen have a defense matrix? A shield of any type? Can she block abilities? Arisa can block abilities. Bastion is amazing at punishing mistakes and overaggression from the enemy. And to me is a super viable pub stomper pick because if the enemy is engaging sloppily at your team, play a little slower with Bastion, get ready for the engagement, and then pop into sentry form when that rush comes in. Them having 100 extra health or 200 on Junker Queen when she uses Commanding Shout won't be that scary when you have an arsenal to unload into her face that she can't stop. A lot of the other DPS picks are a bit slower, a bit more flexible. Their edges aren't as sharp. But Bastion's like positioned as a key meta component for the average player to counteract some of that dumb play style that you probably won't even attempt to do at higher tiers anyway. But not necessarily to pick throughout the whole map, just to counter the things you want to counter. Bastion's overkill style of damage is really good at specifically countering tank aggression in that way. Cassidy's combat role now adds 50% damage resistance, which is similar to the damage resistance he was getting in Deadeye form. So they're making him a very tanky character. This is gonna make him a lot better up against flanker characters. And keep in mind, there's a few ways that this is gonna play out, right? You roll away from, let's say, a tracer chasing you down who kind of won the matchup change when he lost his stun because she can recall the sticky bomb. But now he has a key tool where if he gets stuck by Tracer's pulse bomb and times the roll as it explodes, he can tank it. So against things like that or other characters that like want to engage on him with a burst of damage, like he's pretty strong against Echo normally, but he'll be even better because as those sticky bombs hit you, you get a lot of warning that they're going to explode. You just roll through it and tank what otherwise would be a very high damage ability. So he might be surviving and against a lot of things that is surprising, but be wary of him in matchups against sniper characters, but against a pretty rushy playstyle, I think he fits pretty well. So I'm going to put him actually even above Bastion. I'm glad the devs put Junkrat next because a lot of the things I'm just saying about disabling things running at you too aggressive fits with him as well. You guys saw, I hope, my Junkrat experience video where I, unlike just about everybody else, thinks he's actually pretty good, at least in a pub stomper context against a lot of the heroes that get played that maybe aren't top meta, but you see anyway. A lot of these tanks are built in order to take an absolute pounding, but Junkrat 
his grenade launcher is easier to hit now with a higher projectile size at 0.25, which I think is super important. So you can be less skilled and hit more shots with him. And the steel trap now fully locks targets in place again, and you can throw it faster, which means you'll be able to throw it farther as well and have a lot more control of where it goes. And my most favorite aspect, when you throw the trap faster, if you throw it, throw it right at your feet, the speed it takes to go from your hand into deploy mode is faster as well. So that means reactively up against things running at you, he's good. I would say I think he has a higher skill expression than Bastion because he has more mobility. My feelings on Junk in Overwatch 2 so far is that he reminds me of Overwatch 1 Doomfist, which had a lot of high tier counters and was considered really bad at higher tiers, but can pub stomp really hard because he can just surprise you out of nowhere and combo kill you and get out. And I don't think they need to buff him so that he's good for pros. Sora got the buffs that they were attempting to put into the experimental card where she now will begin her reload faster, which means she'll be able to have a higher uptime of dealing damage. So build ult quicker, have a faster follow-up time, and Concussion Blast will do uh, 30 damage, the same as a melee, as well as more knockback when it direct hits something. So that means up against an enemy hit scan, for example, maybe you direct hit them from away and knock them right off the map. It's a little hard to set up, but I think especially up against tanks flying up at you, as long as you can sneak it past the defense matrix on D.Va, you can knock her super far so that you're safe. Also, and I hate to bring this up every time for just a new character, but what interactions does Junker Queen have against Farah exactly? A benefit of playing Farah Mercy against a Junker Queen insta-lock will be, yeah, she can throw a knife at you, I guess, but she's not going to have the range to counter you at all. I think the reality is that she should go into easily countered, but I don't think people will pick the tanks that would counter her. So because of that, I'm going to say she's map specific. Keep in mind that the more flanky like push maps have a lot of ways to get around her pretty easily. Control pretty good because there's a lot of spots, especially like on Li Zhang, we can fly up in the air, work around the cover, get some work done there and use the double boop to get things off the map. I think she's got some plays to make for sure. Even up against hit scans, because if their aim isn't good enough, as console players know, Farah can be a menace. And without two tanks to block her damage, I think Farah's gonna feel very good on console yet again. The damage of hit scans at range got reined in so much, you can shoot projectiles kind of brazenly at them. And if they don't headshot you with a Widowmaker, you just survive forever in obnoxious positions. So I think she's pretty good. So Metra got a long list of changes and we'll summarize them by saying that the biggest one is the teleporter now builds in a second. It has less health, a longer cooldown, but the cooldown begins as soon as you cast it, not when it's destroyed. So that's important because it doesn't actually help you to destroy it immediately, but it's easier for the enemy to destroy. Either way, Sim is going to be best at teleporting in rushdown type characters, even ranged characters that should be strong in this meta. Good teleports and a rush afterwards can do some work, I think, but it requires so much teamwork that I'm a little hesitant to say that's an easy play you're gonna replicate with random players. They otherwise gave her more reliability buffs to her weapon, more ammo to use with the primary, but it doesn't get more ammo from shooting shields because there is no shields in the game hardly anymore. And her alternate fire is smaller, but comes out faster does less damage, more reliable technically, but I don't know if it's as useful. I almost even wonder if doing 90 damage instead of 120 up against flankers might be kind of weak, actually. Like really top level sim players were really good at spamming that projectile down into the lanes of like a tracer coming after them and being able to burst her with a melee. Now you can't do an orb melee combo at all. So in some ways, even though they're trying to make her more reliable with the right teamwork and maybe you're playing with friends or something, you might be able to say she's in a B tier map specific type pick. I'm going to say she's easily countered and maybe even bad next to Doomfist in D tier, but Torbjorn got a buff where both his fire rates are higher than they were, but we're going to put him in the easily countered tier because, well, it'll make more sense when we finally get to the A tier picks. He's easily sniped and sniper characters are strong. His turret gets less value up against ranged high damage, but he does have a decent matchup when you like hide a turret on a crossfire and a rush comes in, especially a shieldless one. I think you'd prefer to play Bastion against that because he like instantly punishes it with a lot of damage. Torb is just kind of slow and holds the flank. So I'm afraid for him doing much of anything in this meta. Now we'll get into the rest of the DPS picks. Now keep in mind, they super buffed Sojourn in the end of the previous patch so that she's a lot more forgiving with her headshot damage against most tanks 
she farms up her rail quite easily. Like, Sigma's feeding you his shield, Reinhardt's feeding you his shield. A lot of these characters want to run in aggressively on you while she's got a disruptor shot that can slow them down. Now that overall DPS are moving slower, having a DPS that has a really big movement cooldown is going to matter a lot. If you can't hit headshots though, at least on a tank, you're not going to feel she's very good. So drop her down a bit, but especially console players, I think you're going to find Sojourn to be one of the easier answers up against the flying characters that are typically pretty difficult to hit on console. Soldier got Giga nerfed on the first beta, but because he still has legs and his playstyle is really good for Overwatch 2, for the average level of play, I think he might even be better than Sojourn. So if your aim's a little bit worse, Soldier is going to be really reliable because he's got the legs to move away from these hard engages that come in on you. There isn't that many relevant things that stops Visor and they did buff it. Yes, he does less damage than he did before when he was overtuned, but he's still very reliable and accurate. And I just find on console, he's so easy to aim in comparison to the other characters that take a lot more finesse on the sticks. But on PC as well, at medium tiers, until you fear that enemy sniper from headshotting you as soldier, I think you're gonna do quite well with him. And these two picks are kind of the flexible hit scans that can really put a lot of ranged hurt on these characters that people are trying to play, like Orisa and Junker Queen, and even Zarya that's good against a lot of things. Now, Sombra, I think, in Overwatch 2 so far, is gone the other way from Overwatch 1, where she used to be great for pros, really weak for average tier players. They restatted her around, and I think now it's the opposite. I think for average players, she's quite strong because she can isolate and easily get kills without a ton of skill. But up against Junker Queen, remember, Sombra kind of like up against Reaper isn't very good because once she lands her abilities, a hack isn't going to do anything. She has like passive healing once she does her cooldowns. So unless you can hack her before Junker Queen commanding shouts, I don't think you're going to find that matchup very favorable. Now, with that being said, I do think she has favorable matchups up against a lot of other characters. She has her move speed, just like Soldier, returned back to her stealth form so she can get across the map and sneak up on snipers and get what I think are really easy kills for most players. And while at the pro level, they're doing an amazing job at counteracting EMP with the short windows of time that it disables you, most players play sloppy enough that if you're clever, you can sneak in those interrupts onto things and really just blow up the entire enemy's sloppy ult usage. And of course, just matchup specific for sure. Ash, we are going to put alongside the other hit scans. The better you feel you aim with her compared to these, maybe they go up and down, but she didn't get any changes. Remember, she has Coach Gun, which is good to get a tank away from you and distance yourself from, let's say, a big melee attack from Junker Queen. There's limited shields overall, and a lot of engagements are at that mid-range. I also think she wins because flankers are a little weaker with all DPS moving a bit slower this patch. Ash has what I'm going to call one of those DLC hero kits, where she just has a lot of options. Options, and her ult's really good. Having an extra tank in Overwatch 2 is surprisingly important. Bob can go play the objective for you while you scurry away. Remember on push, you only need one character to push the robot. So Bob can kind of control that crossfire while you go get better positioning. Ash also benefits from having good matchups against the characters I think that'll actually get played. I'm gonna say slightly better yet than her though is the two snipers, Hanzo and Widowmaker. Hanzo for me feels quite good because recon arrow is is so useful in the mid fight in order to see things around corners that helps set up your team in a more confident way. But if you can't hit the shots as reliably, maybe you need Widowmaker holding an angle. Both of them have the mobility to go get positioning on off angles as well. Tracer hasn't got any buffs and despite her being good at a pro level, I think is a bit too difficult to get the value out of unless you have insane skill. So I almost want to put her down at C tier because I think there's just way easier options across the board. But with more skill, yes, you can make her work, but just be careful because there's other picks on this list that can kind of just stand with the team and vaguely shoot forward and be fine. So you got to be a expert, I think, to get Tracer to work in Overwatch 2 right now. Maybe you'd say the same for Genji, and I think he does get hurt pretty badly by the move speed nerf, but I will say he is quite good because of Reflect. A lot of people assumed he'd be a blade bot in Overwatch 2. Wasn't really the case, I think, because Reflect is so reliable as an interaction ability. At higher tiers, I think Tracer goes up, 
but at medium tiers, because of the positions you'll be able to play, traversing around the map, I still think flanking is quite good with Genji. And even if it's not his meta, even if there's not Doomfist and Winston diving in, I think you're still going to feel like you can have quite a few matchups. But remember, he's not very good up against Zarya. Zig's got quite a few interactions for him. He can outplay a sniper, but against some of the other ranged characters, he needs a bit more help to go in. It's going to kind of depend on your tank play and your coordination, I think. He's a bit of a snowball character, so if your Junker Queen goes in, gets a lot of cleave, makes a lot of space, you're going to be able to clean up a lot of those wounded targets. Genji's a great character for that. But if your tank's not making the space, you're kind of just stuck playing back, wishing you were a poke character, I think. Reaper feels pretty easy for me to describe because while he is good in rush, and I think against the rush, because if you're playing like a ranged character and you just keep getting rushed, swap to Reaper, be able to hold his ground, shoot with shotguns as they engage on you and wraith away. And you got to be a bit crafty to outplay the snipers and you move slower now. So because of that, even though I see the potential, maybe a bit more of a high tier playstyle, it might be a bit difficult to utilize. All right, these next two picks I think might surprise you a little bit. So I'm going to say both Echo and May for me, are in the A tier. And although on paper you might look, well, Echo, she should die to all these ranged hit scan characters. Remember, Soldier's damage got reined in, and she can be hard for a lot of these other characters to be at the right range at the right time when she can control her movement in air so well. Like you can glide around the cover almost perfectly, nuke your abilities and get out. And in the same way I said about Farah earlier, well, there's a lot of players you don't have to respect. You can just shoot from across the map building ult and Echo, even though the ult got nerfed, has one of the best ults in the game. It gives you a lot of flexibility to manipulate the ult fight. And on top of that is also a DLC hero where the DLC hero rule matters a lot up against the Giga Tanks in 5v5 because Focusing Beam is one of those overkill type abilities that not a lot of DPS have. And if you need to be able to reach some certain damage breakpoints, you might not even need to flank in order to go take a squishy duel. The tank might just be coming right at you and Sticky Bombs into Focusing Beam takes out a lot of tanks in Overwatch 2. She's one of the characters that doesn't suffer too much from the move speed reduction. May might be a surprising pick this high on the list, but I think you're gonna be surprised at the amount of interactions you have afforded to you with Maywall. So the things you can do with Maywall is isolate the enemy tank for your rush comp to go in, or you can deny line of sight, effectively giving your team a tank shield up against sniper sight lines while you focus on the front line. Being able to self heal in cryo freeze makes you immune to a lot of these hard engaged styles and sort of outweigh a lot of those big powerful tank cooldowns they're trying to launch at the team while you kind of cleanse yourself, heal up and you're ready to go controlling the fight yet again. So she's got a lot of options. And although her ult might not get the highlight reels that it did in Overwatch 1, it controls space so well, you can dominate some objective progress. Next up is the supports. Remember that their passive got changed. So now they begin their self heal at 1.5 seconds not one second like it was and really, really strong in the first beta. I think there's a few characters that hate that more than others. But overall, I think the role is a lot stronger now because the overall DPS role is much weaker. So there's going to be a more of a tank support battle in Overwatch 2, not quite to the levels you were used to in Overwatch 1, but more than there was in beta 1, I'm certain. We'll start off with Zenyatta, who did get a nerf, where his Orb of Discord now will cleanse off the enemy in two seconds when it used to last three seconds, meaning he used to be able to mark a tank around a corner and they had to hide for three full seconds. Same thing as a flanker coming in onto him where he can use that wall hack to really predict the engagement. Same thing with a sniper out in the distance. He had a lot of power in that discord orb around cover. Now, he also still regains his buffs from the first beta where he got the extra life and the Spartan kick, which is incredibly powerful. So it's not like he's struggling when characters jump in on him now. He's more durable, has a lot of options, and his ults, I think, ends up mattering in a few key matchups quite potently. Notably, it's going to be worthless against Junker Queen's ultimate, which gives anti-heal to multiple targets. But I'm seriously wondering if his poke damage, especially against shieldless enemies, slower DPS, Discord to really focus fire. As long as he's got the supporting cast, I think, I still think Zenyatta is in S tier. Just setting him up and protecting him is going to mark so many characters that matter so much. Like 
especially these Giga Tanks. I look up and down the tier list and I'm wondering like, what character does he just outright fear? A sniper headshot, that's about it. Everything else he feels good against. And while his big weakness is he can't reposition very quickly, but Overwatch 2 is a game where you can kind of just hold your angle and it takes a lot more for the enemy to make a crafty full rush on you in a good position. Most of the time, you're just kind of in medium range poke battles and Zen's just nuts at that. You do need your other support to peel for him. Mercy got a change in this patch where they removed some of that extra super jump that sort of exploited the more easy super jump that they added in the last patch. So she now just simply does super jump every time, but to a limited height. However, they also added an ability for her to control her ascent as well as her descent with angelic descent passive. So she can use that to counteract some crowd control effects, which I don't know if I think hit Mercy so often in the positions she should play, but, but is gonna be helpful in certain skill ceiling type plays for you to survive. Overall, I think being on a corner, in cover, helping a ranged character do their thing, it's gonna be pretty good this meta. Also, when DPS moves slower, I think you might find maybe not a ton more, but more gaps to get those resurrect plays. Overwatch beta one, Felt like as the team fight happened, it's like there was still so much more extra threat, especially if a DPS was lurking around with that move speed to like just jump in on you and punish you. I think there's gonna be more cases where you can wiggle away and get a res. And if you reliably res with Mercy, until you're at tiers where players are outputting nuts mechanics on the like higher skill ceiling picks, I think Mercy's crazy good. So especially on console, hook up with those range characters, your Echoes, your Faras, etc. But her peeling isn't as strong for Zen as some other picks, but against a lot of the rest of the game. Even with that being said, I just have to put Ana above her in A tier because on one hand, I want to be like, all right, the roll passive, Ana healing in one and a half second instead of one second. All right, that's going to change her ability to survive and how aggressive she can be, but I just don't think it matters. I think it's okay for you to just wait a full one and a half second or uncover Start self-healing and then use your cooldowns to carry the entire team fight like you can do. There's a lot of picks in the game right now that just can't interact with those abilities. Ana is a nuts pick. She doesn't feel as free to me as Zen who, who can cast his ability and lob his damage in. So you have to be good with Ana and her abilities specifically. But if you are, like half the tanks lose to you instantly. There's also a lot of transformation ultimates in the game. So Sleep Dart's amazing in the ult fight for that. Nano Boost is an incredible Overwatch 2 ultimate because Again, transformation ultimates, or even just the tanks kind of are always transforming themselves with all their powerful cooldowns. You put that nano boost on so many of those types of picks and they just run through the entire enemy team. Ana is weaker up against snipers, but until you're at a high enough rank where they easily hit your head every time, I think you'll feel okay with her interacting with the rest of the game. Batiste got that regenerative burst buff that is quite significant when you use it on an teammate who is at half health. Big burst of life he can give. He's easily the best pick to peel for Zen in my opinion, but Batiste always suffers in pickup games, but Batiste always suffers in the pickup game type playstyle because if your team doesn't huddle together when you need to heal them and sort of goes off flanking, he's got to like look around the whole map to heal. He doesn't heal flying characters very well and maybe your teammates are playing flankers jumping in the sky. So there's a lot of scenarios where Batiste doesn't really work that well in Overwatch 2 but in the right ones, he is quite nuts. But often I think you'll feel with how hectic the game gets played, you think Ana is better when your team is splitting up and there's random threats coming at you. I don't think he's very good against Junker Queen though, because he doesn't really have a way to interact with her. She's gonna run in at him and yeah, he can AOE heal everybody, but she's going to get extra healing herself due to the team playing together. So keep a lookout for that. I'm gonna say Lucio is a character that suffers from the self heal delay the most because needing more time in order to get self heal kicking in means that those little moments where he ducks away, he's more vulnerable. He has to stay out of the fight longer. And that really messes with Lucio because he's a character that like wants to be aggressively in, but sort of hide a little bit. And the longer he has to wait before he regains his health, it's just way less pressure. 
Having speed is insane because let's say you're struggling up against the enemy tank line just running you over. Speed boost is one of the ways you're going to get away from that enemy Junker Queen, but they might have speed boost of their own, which kind of equals it out. Without teamwork, I think Lucio is going to be more tricky this meta as opposed to the last one where he kind of could just deathmatch himself and play the team game really well. Now I think he more so does the team game. Keep in mind, a lot of the other supports got buffed, so their like natural value is a bit better. I feel kind Kind of the same way about moira where she just is like a no interaction type hero unfortunately i might even say i find her easily countered i think dps moira is good enough for her to feel easy ahead of lucio i'm just struggling to think if i think she can fit in a tier or not she is a lot easier to play than some of these other more aim dependent picks for sure. If the enemy goes Junker Queen, for example, and you're playing Moira, Junker Queen's just kind of going to out tank everything Moira does and keep going. She's kind of better when there's a brawly fight and she can win with attrition. A bit tricky, a pub stomper character still, but not a strong meta component. Okay, reasons for me to put Brig in A tier. I'm a little scared because I think a lot of players don't master how much movement skill you need with her in terms of timing when to go in and being able to bash away and really holding cover really well. If you do that with Brig and you know how to play her, she's an A tier. I do think she's a more challenging hero than people give her credit for. So uh, maybe drop her down in power a bit. She peels for Zen pretty well. Her shield, surprisingly, like is a good way to slow down some ranged sniper characters because they take a while to charge up to that big sniper shot and taking a couple hits with a shield like it just adds some more tanking to the team meanwhile you can boop the tank back a little bit dash away from them and play keep away against orisa and her higher damage i think brig will feel farmed by her unless you activate inspire and run away from orisa's upgraded fusion driver you're gonna kind of get melted but against a lot of the other shieldless tanks like junker queen hog ball hitting a flail and bashing away means that you're going to get distance from that engage as well as activate a lot of healing for the team. Briggs got the potential, but because I'm clarifying so much, I think I will take her out of A tier. I think she's a little technical to know how to play. And I almost want to do this with BAP for the same reasons, but I think he's just a bit more self-sufficient. And of course, we don't know what Fox Girl is yet, so I can't actually put her on the tier list, but that's our beta phase two tier list for the first patch. Let me know your thoughts on all the characters and their power level in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it with a like and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to actually get notified when our new videos come out. Overwatch 2 has got a lot of content, so we'll be making a lot of content to cover it. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.